Hello everyone, Danny Bate Orr from Simply Do It here, and I want to take a moment and talk about the interest rates we are all so concerned about. And it really starts with this message I received uh, today or yesterday, and it says, Danny, I want to buy two properties, but the loans are quite expensive these days, so it's a difficult decision. Well, let's uh, really dive into that because this is a message I'm getting in so many words or similar words, almost, I want to say several times a week, if not almost on a daily basis. So I want to dive into really putting some perspective and understanding into the idea of the expensive interest rates. Okay. In order to do that, the best way, let's just dive into the numbers and kind of go through the details right now. So right now, so first thing I want to ask you is, if we were not at the 6.3, 6.4, 6.5% interest rate, what would you consider a good interest rate to have in order to buy? So in other words, if you're saying the loans are quite expensive, well, let me ask you this. What does the rate need to be in order for you to say, you know what, interest rate is okay. I can definitely move forward, right? So I just want to kind of uh, uh, spark that question. Let's take an example and really dive into some understanding here about this whole concept. In this case, a real house we're considering, asking price is 285. I'm going to use 30% down, uh, 30% down and 70% mortgage. The down payment for this house is 85,500. 85,500. The estimated rent is 2,000. You know, actually, it's a little bit more, but we're going to just keep it simple. And the fixed expenses are six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, insurance, property taxes, management fee, even a listing fee allocation, etc. Six hundred and fifty dollars a month. So that means our cash flow before mortgage payments, be before debt service, is thirteen fifty, one thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Now let's explore how our cash flow looks like after we reduce or, or uh, reduce or expense the mortgage payments. Mortgage number one, 6.3%, right? So the mortgage payments are $1,235, $1,235 a month. That leaves me with a cash flow of $115 a month. Let's just say for a second, if, if the mortgage today was 1% less, 5.3%, then you would say, oh my God, this is cheap. I'm jumping in and I'm going to definitely buy because it's cheap interest rate. And I'm going to pay instead of $1,235, i am going to pay $1,100. $1,100. Oh, that leaves us with $250 in cash flow. So that means there is a gap between those the 1% difference equals in this case, and very similarly, most of our properties, to $135 a month. So this expensive interest rate is really $135 a month or $1,620 a year, $1,620 a year. That's the gap we're talking about. That's the gap that people are now sitting and saying, you know what, if it was cheaper, I would dive in. Maybe you're expecting 4% or 5% or 3.5%. Those days are really rare and they're not really available. So those interest rates really do not exist unless there's something catastrophic happening in your life, such as COVID. Let's go back to reality where five, five and a half, five point three is more reasonable. What is the gap? $1,620 a year in the world of real estate we live in, right? If you're living in a world of real estate where you're, you're dealing with a million or $2 million uh, homes, obviously this 1% difference, it's a huge number. So it's really important not just to look at a percentage, break it down to the dollar value. What is the dollar value of those, you know, of those differences, of this gap? Now let's look at what people that are saying, you know what, I'm gonna wait, or I'm not gonna take action. While they're not taking action, let's see what you are missing on. So this property, I'm going to just assume for a moment that over the next 10 years, we're going to be seeing an average of 4% appreciation per year, right? It's nothing crazy. It's nothing, you know, uh, uh, too conservative. It's not uh, aggressive. Let's just use 4%. 
4% a year. You know, we can even change it to 3% if you want, but let's just say 4% a year. So that means year over the year of the year, I'm seeing a gain of 11,000, and then uh, the second year, uh, 23,000, and third year, 35,000, you know, yeah, an average of $11,000 gain per year, all right? It's gonna go, it's gonna go obviously bigger and bigger. So that means, if you really think about it for a second, in one year, this property that I'm losing $1,620, right? So I'm losing because of the high interest rate. It's costing me an additional $1,620 a year. It's actually gaining in this year, 11,400 in the first year, okay? Or because I'm losing here, I'm basically just gaining $10,000 for the first year, and slowly it will grow more than $10,000 every year thereafter. So let's think about it for a second. Maybe we wait, maybe we wait, and in one year, we get the interest rate down to 5.3%, right? What did we, what happened during that year? Well, very likely that while I waited for a better rate, this house is now costing $10,000 or $11,000 more than what I could have paid for it last year, right? So that's just already something to think about. In many markets, inventory sold quality properties or inventory of quality property is tight, that it's, there's a very good chance it will be more than $11,000 a year, right? So we may miss on more. So now let's just say, you know, let's just say you purchase it today, understanding that 6.3 or 6.4, it's not that terrible and it's not, it's manageable. It is something that we can accommodate into the transaction, case by case, but we can accommodate. And let's just say that in one year, you're going to be in a situ in a market where the interest rates are going to be 5.3, even 5%, even maybe 5.5. What are you going to do about it? Well, let's think about it. I have this property already appreciated a little bit, no guarantees, appreciated a little bit, and I'm going to do the following. I'm going to be refinancing, not even taking any cash out, lowering the rate. I already secured 2020 four prices on a house that it's worth a little bit more in 2025 and i'm refinancing my cash flow just got improved and i got and i still have this house from a year ago prices value etc so that is going to work in your favor so anyone who's sitting and saying you know the interest rate is so expensive i'm just going to say the following you're absolutely right don't do anything about it you know instead of thinking how to work with the interest rate because that's the reality you should probably do nothing or ask yourself what is the right interest rate for you to jump in and buy or how can you work with the interest rate that you have right now and maybe using it in your advantage knowing that it's maybe or very likely will change in the next few years and you will have an opportunity in two, three, four, five years, maybe or likely to lower it, refinance, get a lower rate and secure not today, not 2025 or 2026 purchase price, but 2024. Because what we're seeing in this country for many years now is that year over year prices are, you know what, just creeping up. So the house of today that I only need 100,000 or 85,000 to purchase, next year just add another, who knows, a few thousand dollars to it in order to buy the same house. And I've seen it again and again and again. And it all comes down to the interest rate is not really beneficial or, or too expensive. Too expensive relatively to what? To zero? That doesn't exist. Too expensive to rates of 2020, 2021? You're right. That is an abnormality. That is not really a real rate. That was a lucky one, right? So what is it really more expensive of rates of normal rates, normal, whatever normal is, what is normal rate for an investment property? 5%, five percent, five and a half. So if you're paying a one to one and a half percent more than what would be normal rate, is that really expensive? And you know what? It is expensive on a million dollar home. Is it really expensive on a 
$300,000 home, a big difference, I beg to differ. So really take a deep look and really think about this. Maybe by saying interest rates are high, you are actually hurting yourself. Thank you very much for listening. We're always here for your great questions and comments. I love those things. It benefits everybody when we're able to tackle this. I hope this was helpful for everyone who's listening, not just the person who sent it. And for the person who sent it, thank you for sending this. Bye-bye.